So far, all of our sorting and searching have worked with basic types, either ints or doubles. And it's worth taking a second to talk about what we would do if we were going to sort something more complex, like case classes. The same could also apply for tuples, but the case classes are a bit more interesting. So let's go back to our sorting code. We have a bubble sort, a min sort, an insertion sort, and a shell sort. We can just play with one of these. We don't need to work with all of them. So I'm going to pick the bubble sort, just because it keeps things simple. This bubble sort sorted doubles. But what if I had wanted to sort integers? Scala. Let's go ahead and let's load in. And we will call. OK. Um, so ints equals array dot fill. No, heck, just array of that'll work. That's not happy. Okay. Our sort works on doubles and nothing else. Well, what if I wanted it to work with ints? What if I needed to sort ints here? Well, I could come into this file and I could copy the sort and what do I have to change to make it so that it works with ints? Turns out the only thing I have to change here is the word int. Yeah, I have to change it from long to int and I'm going to give it a different name so this will be bubble sort int. Let's load them back in and now I can say bubble sort int on ints. And if we look at ints, it's sorted. Eh, okay, so hopefully, first off, you're far enough along with programming that doing this makes you feel a little bit dirty. Okay, this whole copy and paste so that we can change one tiny thing really shouldn't feel right. Uh, this is one of the things that we will fix uh, in future videos, basically my second semester class. I introduce how to do this type of thing polymorphically so they can write a single sort to work with a lot of different things. But for now what I want to focus on <clears throat> is the case of we want to sort a case class. So instead of being an array of int, let's pick something else here. How about we make it an array of student and then I'm going to create a case class for student where students will have a last name which is a string, a first name which is a string and for right now we're just being very simple an average which we'll say is a double. Okay and so I want this uh, to bubble sort int but bubble sort student to sort students. Let's try loading that in. We have a problem here. Okay, it says that the value greater than is not a member of student. It's on this line right here. Well, that kind of makes sense, right? I can't say if one student is greater than another student. Uh, and you might think your teachers feel that way, but uh, that's, that's not kind of an allowed operation. It's not something that is natively part of the case class. In fact, with students, I could sort them in many different ways. I could sort them by their last names. I could sort them by their first names. I could sort them by last name plus first name. I could sort them by their averages. Okay. So there are lots of different ways that I could go about sorting these students, and just saying greater than doesn't make sense. So one thing that I could do is I could pick. Okay, let's say I wanted to sort them by their last name. Well, then I put in here dot L name on each of those. And because I can do comparisons on strings that way, this loads in and that code is happy. The problem is now, if I wanted to say, oops, I'd actually like to sort them by their averages, I actually have to copy this code yet again. I'm already on my third copy of it here. I'd have to copy it again 
and change it so that this was AVG, AVG, and I'd probably want, and I'd need to give it a, a different name uh, because I'm sorting it in a different way. A better way to do that would be to pass in a function here that serves the role of this operator. Okay, That operator is greater than. And so I'm going to call my function gt. And this is a function that I pass in two students, a student and a student, and it gives me back a boolean. Really, that's what greater than does, right? If we have greater than between two integers, it takes two integers, the thing that's on the left and the thing that's on the right, and it gives us back a boolean telling us whether the first one is greater than the second one. Now if I'm going to do that, instead of using the greater than symbol here, I'm going to call that function. I'm not going to put L name in here anymore. Because it will be up to the function that we pass in to decide how to sort the students. That is once again happy and it compiles. So, to illustrate this, we're just going to make a very simple array that has like three students. Student Doe Jane has a 99. Student Smith Sam has an 83, and I need a comma there. Student uh, let's see, what's a uh, long first name Pat has a 90. And that closes off our array. And I have an array of three students. Now I can bubble sort on the student. I'm going to pass in students. And then I have to pass in a function that compares two students and gives back a boolean. So what if I wanted to sort them by their last name? That would be underscore dot L name greater than underscore dot L name. Remember the underscore notation can be used anytime the arguments appear once each and in order. Uh, helps if they're not inside of parentheses and whatnot, but this is a good example of that. I said I'd called it bub sort. Let's try that. Hey, it ran. So let's look at students. The students should be in order by their last name, Doe, Long, Smith. One of the things that's cool about this is what if I wanted them in reverse order? So I wanted it so that the last name came first. I could make it so that greater than was actually a less than. And then when I go look at the students, I'd have Smith, Long, Doe okay, in the opposite order. The nice thing is when I want to sort by something else, for example, their averages, this same sort will do that as well. And we have the 83, the 90, and the 99 in sorted order. So this gives us a nice flexible sort that works with case classes and allows us to sort the case classes in any way that we want. It's not polymorphic in the sense that it's still limited to only sort students, but it's flexible in how it sorts the students and gives us the ability to not have to copy for every single type of sort that we wanted to create.